How's it going everyone? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to Steins Gate Linear Bounded Phenogram. In the last episode we finished off Moika's route. That was fine and dandy. And now we're going to be jumping into Lukako's route. Really any of the routes that we have available to us are in the Alpha World line which is kind of unfortunate because we all know what's supposed to happen in the Alpha World line. But what kind of surprised me is that uh, if you guys didn't watch the previous episode please do. Moika took the fall in this world line in comparison to Mayuri, as far as we know. Uh, who knows if Mayuri has to take the fall no matter what, or if somebody just has to. I'm, I'm not exactly sure of the rules, but that's what happened, and it was kind of a surprise. What will happen here? Hermaphroditus in the Labyrinth. What a name. Very fitting for Lukako. And just like in the end of the last episode, we start this one off with me being out of breath. This time for a different reason. Last time I had to go chase down one of my rat dogs. This time I literally just got done running, took a shower, ate a little, and now here I am recording. So, good on me, right? Oh, wow, wow. We are just jumping right into that, aren't we? Holy shit. <laughs> oh, fuck, all right, well. Good start. Good start. Very, uh, very surprising with this one. Surprising that this is, like, what was to be expected, but not this early on. Mayuri chan is dead. Everything had happened so suddenly. She was totally fine the day before. Her smile was as energetic as always, making everyone around her feel worry-free. Mayuri chan is my friend. No, my best friend, or at least that's what I choose to believe. Mayuri-chan was the first person to talk to me when I had just entered high school, when I didn't know anyone. She would always try to cheer me up. To be honest, none of this felt real. Not until the day before yesterday when I saw Mayuri-chan at the funeral. It was like she was sleeping inside of her coffin. The usual smile on her face. It felt like she could wake up at any moment, warmly laugh, and say good morning. But no matter how long I waited, Mayuri-chan didn't move. Oh, excuse me. Her eyes remained closed. She didn't move an inch. Her skin was cold to the touch. She was so stiff. That's when I finally realized Mayuri-chan is dead. She'll never get to smile again, or look at me with those bright eyes or talk to me in her gentle, girly voice. Never again. Where do people go when they die? <laughs> There's only one way to find out. I asked my dad something like this when I was a kid. Huh, well that's a different one. That's what he taught me. But the reality is that people are burned to ash when they die. Mayuri-chan had become ash. She had become smoke rising up into the sky. That was supposed to be a sad thing, but... But then why is the sky so clear and blue? I look up with my dry eyes, now incapable of producing tears as my mind races. Ah, well, uh... Are we a boy or a girl in this one? It's kinda important. I place my hand gently on my chest. Small and inconspicuous, but a soft swell. Proof that I- uh-oh. I say it out loud. Yes, I am a girl. I talk like a guy, but I'm a girl. There's no mistaking it. For a long, long time, I've had the same dream over and over again. I'm not sure when it started. I think it started when I was just a child, so I must have been having this dream for quite some time. It's a very strange dream. One in which I live as a boy. Everything about how I look is the same. My personality is the same. I'm as unconfident and introverted as ever. And the only thing different about me is my sex. Everybody around me treats me like a boy. And I guess that makes sense. In my dream, I am a boy. Of course they treat me that way. My mom, my sister, and my friends. Even the person most special to me. And for some reason, the me in that dream feels that being a boy is a sad thing. 
the me in that dream wishes they were a girl. Whenever I wake up from that dream, I always check my body, and then I feel relief wash over me. This has been happening ever since I was a child. Back then, I thought everyone was having similar kinds of dreams, but I was wrong. I asked my sister and my friends, but nobody had the same experience I did. Even Mayuri-chan said that she'd never had a dream like that before. So one day I decided to do some research on it. According to the books, a dream where your sex changes signifies a change in the nature of your relationships with the people around you. But looking back on things, I can't see where or when that change could have happened, if at all. And if that was the case, why would I keep seeing the same dream over and over? I've always wondered this, or wondered about this, why am I the only one with these bizarre dreams? But then one day the answer found me. Ah, so this Okabe that we currently have is from another Alpha World line where he was originally a boy and then they did the D mail. He jumped world lines to this one or one that eventually got to this one and Lukaku remained a girl. The words of the person most special to me, the words of Okabe Rintero san. Okabe san had told me that originally I was actually a boy but later turned into a girl. His words pierced my chest like a sharp knife. I was so stunned. I couldn't believe that someone so important to me could say something as awful as that. How is that awful, by the way? I'm kind of curious. Like, is it... does it make sense? Like, I, I, I don't know. Was that how Okabe-san had always looked at me? I can't believe he's pretending to be a girl when he's actually a boy. I don't know if such a thing is even possible. But, I remember being immensely sad that he felt that way about me. Okay, I kind of see, I kind of see where, where Lukaku is coming from. I'd loved him for so, so long. Ever since the day I first met him. Just looking at Okabe-san's face filled me with joy. Oi, Lukaku. Just hearing him call out my name was enough to put a smile on my face. And one day when I have the courage, when I become much, much stronger... Then will my feelings finally reach him. I'd always felt that way. But to find out that Okabe-san had thought of me as a boy, just thinking about it filled me with a deep sadness. A deep, deep sadness. It was so painful that I couldn't help but cry. But, somewhere in my heart I was satisfied. Yeah, I knew it. This discomfort I'd, I've had forever. That weird recurring dream. This feeling that I'm not who I'm supposed to be. I felt like Okabe-san's words had finally cleared the doubt in my mind. I really was a boy. Triggered by Okabe-san's words, memories of my time as a boy began to surface. Well, that's not quite right, actually. According to Okabe-san, it was a world line in which I was a boy. Even now, the whole thing is too difficult for me to really understand, but nonetheless, the fact remains that I was a boy at some point. Okabe-san told me that he wanted me to go back to being a boy. According to him, something called the phone wave named subject to change is what turned me into a girl. He and the others had made it. He said that by sending messages into the past using a machine, or using this machine, a person can change history. And apparently I as a boy had told him that I wanted to be a girl. I wanted to be a girl. Which means that I had hated life as a guy, and I had always wanted to be a girl. Then what about the me of now? I gave it some thought, and my conclusion was clear as day. I still don't want to be a boy. I want to stay like I am, but... <laughs> His next words were beyond my comprehension. Oh, okay. I kind of see where this is going. Okay, this is reminding me of the route in the original Steins Gate that we could take with Lukaku, and I remember it ending with them allowing Mayuri to die. They stay in the world line, 
but Lukaku uses the um, the time leap machine. She uh, she goes back. I say she because Lukaku was a she here. Uh, she goes back in order to spend the day with Mayuri. And we don't see any of this because we're following Okabe. We just notice that, you know, things change. We're in a different area, different circumstances. And then we get with Lukaku. I don't know if this is similar, but it, it feels and sounds very similar to that situation where Okabe was trying to fix all the, the fuck-ups. And by that, I mean the D-mails. Mayuri-chan is my best friend, but she's also Okabe-san's childhood friend. Mayuri-chan, dying. It all seemed like a bad joke, but even I knew that Okabe-san wasn't the sort of person to goof around about this. Uh, he can say and do weird things at times, but when the going gets tough, it's always been serious, or he's always been serious. I wouldn't have fallen in love with him if he wasn't. Okabe-san said that my becoming a girl had altered the world line, resulting in Mayuri-chan's eventual death. So in order to prevent that from happening, I'd have to go back to being a boy. Of course, I couldn't just accept that. I even considered that maybe Okabe-san had always hated me, which was why he was saying these awful things. But five days later in the evening, Mayuri-chan had... <sighs> she had died. According to Hashida-san, who was with her at the time, Mayuri-chan was acting perfectly normal before everything went south. But then all of a sudden, she collapsed in pain and then eventually stopped moving altogether. Yeah, this is the same thing. So this is moving past Moika and the Rounders going out and killing her. This is when, um... This is when she would just die regardless of anything. She'd be ran over. She would just collapse. She would just stop existing, like, just straight up. She had really died. And if what Okabe-san said was true, it was all my fault. Mayuri-chan died because I'm a girl. Because I'm a girl. Because I wished to be a girl, Mayuri-chan died. This body is what killed her. And yet I'm still... I'm still in this body. Why am I like this? Why am I still like this? Why am I still a girl? Even now I... I want to stay as is. Is that how I really feel? I don't know anymore. I don't understand my own feelings. But if I really do believe that, I'm the worst. Looking at my body had become unbearable, so I turn away only to see a certain object. A toy katana. Wait, that shit was a toy this whole time? Okabe-san had given this precious gift to me, the timid girl who could barely ever speak her mind. He told me that by practicing swings with this, I'd be able to become strong. Strong. Yes. Like the wind or some shit. I swing Samadare with all my might. If swinging this thing can get rid of my doubt, can get rid of my need to think. Uh, my mind and heart can't help but feel this way. If swinging this sword hundreds of times means getting rid of these feelings, but... Didn't really get that far. Gotta work on those upper arm muscles. I've never been particularly strong. I don't have physical or mental strength. No guts, no decisiveness. No matter how much I try to act like I care for my friends, at the end of the day, I'm only looking out for myself. To prove that, I can't even do 30 swings. I'm... I'm just a weakling. And being a weakling is a bad thing. Yeah. A bad thing. To me, the world is made up of good things and bad things. I'm not the one who gets to decide which is which. So who does? Someone other than me. If you're a boy, being girly is a bad thing. If you're a girl, being girly is a good thing, of course. As a boy, being reliable and self-confident is good, 
and as a girl gentle, delicate, and kind is good. That's why my appearance, as a boy anyway, is bad. I needed to be a girl. Unfortunately, being a weakling is a bad thing for both girls and boys. And that's what society thinks anyway. And if society thinks that way, then that's all there is to it. Regardless of what I am, I'm left I'm left a weakling no matter what. You mean as a weakling? My existence is still bad. Nothing changes. I I We're getting so many CGs. I'm gonna run out of thumbnail material for this fucking route. All I can do is hug my knees and cry. Because if I keep crying, someone will come to help me. A friend will come by and ask if I'm alright. But because of me, that friend is... She's... Oh. A small voice calls out to me. Just loud enough to be audible over the sound of the gravel moving. I look up. I look up and find him standing there. The person most special to me. Okay. Oh nice, we got the phone. Do we have anything going on here? Oh, we've got something with Big Sis? Are you okay? It sounds like a lot happened. Are you okay? I know I'm in no position to tell you to cheer up. But make sure you eat. Mom and Dad are worried, too. Well, well, thank you. I don't want to make Mom and Dad worry too much. Thanks for being concerned about me. I'll call sometime. Alright. I didn't even know that there was a big sis involved here. I'm not a real fan. The moment I say his name aloud, the tears start coming. I try my best to hold them back. Kino. It's true. I loved Mayuri-chan. She was my best friend. But... Okabe-san doesn't respond to my words, a pained expression on his face. He looks like he's in so much pain. Of course he is. As her childhood friend, Okabe-san was closer to Mayuri-chan than I ever was. She was so important to him. How can I say something like this to him? I'm about to do another bad thing. But I just can't help myself. Mayuri-chan was... Okabe-san had said, <coughs> excuse me, Okabe-san had said that this was what I wished for. Sorry, did not mean to, to fumble that, but this isn't the world I wanted. A world in which I become a girl, all at the expense of Mayuri-chan's life. I never asked for this world. Okabe-san says to me, but even then I know it's a bad thing. So why? I ask him, 
but his response is plain and simple. <sighs> I unconsciously raise my voice. I can't just let things stay the way they are. I can't let the bad things stay bad. Okabe-san had been conducting some kind of super complicated research with Makase-san and Ashida-san. Apparently, not only had they made a machine to send emails into the past, they had also made a time machine. Traveling back in time, it all seems like some kind of dream. It's hard to believe, but if anyone could do it, it'd be Okabe-san, and that's why I firmly believe. No, not just him. The reason he was probably able to make these incredible inventions is because he had Ashida-san, Makase-san, and Mayuri-chan at his side. Honestly. Honestly, I had always wanted to be a part of their group, but I was never good enough. Unlike Hashida-san and Makase-san, there's nothing I can do. Even though I get that tra uh, time traveling is amazing, I don't understand exactly how or why it is. I don't know anything about computers. I don't understand complex topics. I could never ask them to let me be a part of their group. It was impossible. Well, I mean, Lukako is a lab mem. Murinanda. Okabe-san shakes his head, his expression filled with dread. And still, I raise my voice to speak again. Okabe-san declares, his fists clenched. Giving up, that's bad. Okabe-san raises his voice and grabs my shoulders in response to my continued whining. I instinctively pull back a little bit. No. Like, it's, it's hard to come up to that, like, decision to just quit. And it's also hard to accept the outcome. Okabe-san manages to squeeze the words out. He then tells me exactly how much he went through to try to save Mayuri-chan. Oh, okay, well, stop talking there. His, his voice line wasn't done. His grief-filled cries, they remind me. They remind me that I'm only thinking about myself. I didn't even try to consider what painful experiences Okabe-san might have gone through until now. Okabe-san is the one who built the time machine. There's no way he didn't try and use it to save Mayuri-chan. Son, whatever. <laughs> he had jumped back through time over and over again to try and save her from her fate. So many times. And yet somehow death always comes out or came out on top. There's no, or there was no running away from it. Over and over again, Okabe-san was faced with Mayuri-chan's death. I guess it was Chan. Faced with the death of someone so special to him. I want her to live. I don't want her to die. No matter how much he prayed to the powers that be, his feelings never reached them. Instead, only the unwavering reality of death repeated infinitely. Just how painful must that all have been? How could I have said such cruel things to the person who had 
to watch someone he cares about so much die over and over again. But... I sometimes kind of forget about that, and it's actually one of the greatest parts of Steins Gate. Like, the actual mentality, like, the death of Okabe's mentality, just straight up. Knowing that he's at a dead end, and that while he is trying to do all he can, he's just constantly running into the same deal, where Mayuri is dying and dying in multiple ways, and no matter what he does, nothing works. It is just awful. I remember watching the anime. That shit got my anxiety racing. But even so, I can't help but say it. I mean... The only option left. The only one. His response is quick and unyielding, almost as if he knew what I was going to say. But I have no intention of just backing down. お前を男には持たさない。どうして。どうしてですか。俺か。それを選んだんだ。but... Because... Because being a girl is a bad thing. I know this is unfair. Right before Mayuri chan passed away, Okabe san asked me if it was okay to turn me back into a boy. In exchange for agreeing to it, I asked him if I could at least spend a day together with him as a girl. But ultimately, Okabe-san decided not to turn me back into a boy. I know for a fact that the reason he didn't send the message was because of me. So why am I saying this to him? I know it's wrong, but... This burden is too heavy for me to carry by myself. A part of me is extremely relieved, even happy, to hear those words. But it's not enough to erase the guilt inside of me. He says that, but... I mean... Because of this body of mine. And anyway, Okabe-san won't be happy either. <laughs> he looks straight at me, 
But I can't look back into his eyes. I'm not looking at anything. The twinkle that was there before is gone now. Okabe-san has to live with the burden of knowing that he abandoned Mayuri-chan. And that's all my fault. Because I said that I wanted to be a girl, Mayuri-chan died, and Okabe-san has to shoulder that guilt forever. I can't even begin to imagine how painful that must be. But can I really keep telling him not to give up? No, I'm sure that's something I shouldn't do. Telling Okabe-san to not give up after all the horrific things he's seen and experienced? I can't keep saying that to him. I'd just be selfish, or I'd just be being selfish. I get where he's coming from, but he probably just wants to put my mind at ease. Heck, I want to undo my own sins and be at ease, but I can't bring myself to make Okabe-san shoulder more pain just for my sake. So if that's the case, all that's left for me to do is... I cling to Okabe-san's chest. Then maybe this weight might become a little lighter. Okabe-san's too. Yeah, good luck with that one. マユリ will also become a little lighter. Oh. Okabe-san embraces me in his arms. His gentle voice. It's so soft and fragile. I... I finally feel like I've been forgiven, even just a little. Forgiven for being a girl. That sin will never disappear. It's just too heavy for me to carry by myself. But if Okabe-san carries it with me, forever. Damn, what a fucking start to this route. If he stays by my side... Yeah, that's it. Those were the words I had been waiting all this time to hear. I wanted someone to forgive me. And Okabe-san wanted the same thing as I did. He is the only one who can forgive me, and I him. And like that, we'll continue to lick each other's wounds. But if that's what it takes for the two of us to be forgiven... Maybe, just maybe, that's okay. Watch that just be the end of the route. <laughs> just straight up. Okay, we'll end the episode there because I feel like, you know, that was a nice, long, just flowed together segment. And I don't want to add more to that, to be honest. And I'm also kind of wanting to keep this not too lengthy of an episode. But I'm pretty sure, like, I I want to, like, bet bet some uh, some coins, some, some fine coins, 
that this is the exact or similar route to the one or world line I should I should rephrase to the one that we were on focusing on changing it back Lukaku's D mail and then we just decided oh yeah we're going to you know stay on this one I feel like this is the exact or very similar direction because talking about sharing the burden that like sparked nostalgia in me like oh wait I feel like I've heard this before, like this isn't the first time that this has been brought up in some sort of way in Steins Gate. So, uh, yeah, I'm betting some coins on this one. Oh, excuse me. And if I'm wrong, well, whatever. I don't know what I'm thinking of then, but thank you all for watching this episode. I feel like this is gonna be a very, very sad route. I don't know why, but I'm just getting a bad feeling, but thank you all for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I will see you all in the next one. Take it easy.